really do know something about absolutely. A visual artist called David Hockney. When David Hockney was walking in his village in Yorkshire recently, someone came up to him and said, so David, I understand you started drawing on your telephone. And he said, well, no, actually, I speak on my sketch pad. <laughs> so, you know, the, this villager is reflecting that art and technology have had a very loose relationship, a love-hate relationship for a while. In fact, it goes back 135 years ago when um, the Royal Academy of Art decided that printmaking was not a creative process. It was reproductive. Out went no printmakers in our Royal Academy. They had to form their own Royal Society of Printmakers and Exhibit A 130 years later. If you want to buy a print, you're going to have to mortgage your house again. <laughs> <laughs> completely not. Unless you buy it from me. <laughs> Again, photography, 1840, eh, copycat, it's not art. Baudelaire, the famous French writer and critic, said um, any artist that uses the camera for art is uncreative and lazy. Got that wrong, but it took 100 years before the New York Museum of Art collected any photography in the 1940s. And of course, photography became a well-loved uh, art form. And in 2011, I'm here to tell you that Andreas Gursky achieved $4.3 million for uh, an edition of one of his pieces of, one of his photographs through Christie's. So you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Digital art is where prints were 100 years ago, where photography was 40 years ago, and it's not going to take that long. I'm going to come back here in 10 years if you'll have me. I'll be wearing much nicer clothes, <laughs> much nicer handbag, and if you want a piece of that action, see me afterward. <laughs> um, let's talk about what is digital art. Digital art is something that is made on a digital device like a computer, smartphone, iPad, and so on, with the aid of software. That can be software that's purchased for $3.99 through an app, or it can be a piece of software the artist designed him or herself through creative coding. There are many kinds of digital art, as many kinds of digital art as there is technology to produce it. I'll just go through a few very quickly. There's generative art, which is created by a program in a computer that changes when you turn it on. Each time you turn it on, you see something different. There's interactive art, which uses normally the Connect, Microsoft Connect software, and you have to step in it to make it work. There's virtual reality art that you put on and go into another world. There's augmented reality art that uses animation, so it changes what you see. There's iPad art, there's 3D sculpt, there's 3D printed art, which is changing the way sculpture is looked at today. So, okay, there's all this stuff, and here I am standing in the same room with a Picasso expert. The computer's been around for 60 years. What's different today? Why now? Why is digital art starting to have its moment? Why are you here listening to me about digital art? The answer to that is, uh, in your pocket, put your hand on your phone, and then think back to 1969 when NASA put two guys on the moon. At your fingertips is the same processing power that NASA had in 1969. Now you can't put a man on the moon with your phone, <laughs> but you have the same computing capacity with your phone. Those of you old enough to remember the craze supercomputer of the 1990s, more, more power here than a craze supercomputer. Now, these things aren't just the purview of generous Tiffin donors like yourself. According to statistics, as of 2017, a third of all mobile phone owners will have a smartphone. That's Africa, China, and India, as well as the US and Europe, will have this. A studio for art, for, <laughs> for getting your text, for, for video, for photography, for film, for communicating with other artists through, uh, if, if, if Granny or uh, a relative has one of these, you know, for a sketch pad like Dave, David Hockney's. Um, just think about the communicative skills from nowhere Africa to be able to get this stuff, get it out, get it entered in the Lumen Prize. And if it gets there, I'll have a curator from uh, Tate or the VA look at your work. Democratizing art. That's what digital art is all about, about communicating it, making it. I know I've run out of time pretty much, so I will end with uh, David Hockney again who said that using his iPad is like having an endless sheet of paper. He can adjust the scale forever. What is uncreative about that? <laughs>
might be appropriate, but, uh, but still, um, there we go. Um, I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, two weeks ago, I was in Houston, Texas, and I went to see the Roth, famous Rothko Chapel. I don't know how many of you have ever seen it, but it's a small octagonal building. You walk into it. There's very little light, just some from the roof. There's a roof light letting in some sunlight. It's very dark. And you're immediately faced with 14 huge canvases by Mark Rothko, who's one of the great American mid-century painters, one of the early abstract expressionists. And at first, before your eyes get used to it, it's very, very dark and very, very depressing. And so you sit down and you, you wait until your eyes have adjusted to the light levels inside this chapel. And then you begin to see things. You begin to see that what you thought was pure blackness is something much more subtle. You begin to see a black rectangle floating in a sea of, of a dark blue. You begin to see purple. So then you, then you get up and you approach the paintings and you see subtleties of, of color washes and brushwork. But it all takes it all takes time, and somehow the experience of, of, of waiting to, until you can see something properly is, to me, is a great defense of traditional art. It, it's one of those things that you can't get without looking, and you can't get without waiting. Um, so when I want to defend traditional art, paint to canvas, plates cut by hand and printed, and actually I didn't know the story about the Royal Academy eliminating printmakers. I'm, I'm, um, that's a useful thing to know. <laughs> um, it's that kind of, it's this kind of craft and this kind of experience that, that I'm uh, defending. And if you think of a very subtle Rothko painting, and these paintings were made in 1965. I'm not sure that that's something that a computer could have improved on. Um, before I agreed to do this debate, um, I, I hadn't actually thought much about digital art because being the fogey that I am, I, I, de I only deal in people who are dead. <laughs> Picasso's the last person, the main person I deal with, and he died in 1973. Um, and I hadn't realized how, what a big field digital art actually um, covers, from drawings scaled up to computers uh, for, for, uh, for a sculpture, which who could argue with that, to drawings on an iPad, and Carla mentioned um, David Hockney, and I, some of you may have seen his drawings on iPads at the Royal Academy, which are interesting, but to me not as interesting as the actual drawings done with the hand and the pen and the, and the, the brush to um, computer-generated paintings, which Carl also mentioned, which you know, might eventually yield something as interesting as the Mona Lisa. Um, <laughs> but in the same way that a million monkeys sitting in typewriters might eventually write more in peace. <laughs> but, um, but it somehow, it wouldn't be, but it wouldn't be the same. You'll get your rebuff, you'll get your chance. <laughs> so digital art undoubtedly has its purposes, among them, the, as Carla said, the democratization of art. And as one of the founders of TIFF and I, I, I can't be against democratization. But what worries me about not only digital art, but, but all art today, is that, and but particularly digital art, is that when you get something driven by technology and technological advances, <coughs> There's always going to be a tremendous fascination with the new, the novelty, the immediacy, and what's what's fast to do and what's fast to grasp. And um, I think that um, I think digital art will certainly have its place. I'm a little bit worried that what starts us out as the sideline become, may become the main show, and I really don't want to lose that sense of craft that uses the hand and the eye and the take an art that takes time to make and time to appreciate. Thank you. Outside. <laughs> <laughs> the look on that screen took a year. The man's a 
a first from Cambridge in mathematics, algorithms created that. That's crap, Fred. Sorry, it's crap. <laughs> Real it's a different crap. kind of crap, though, isn't it? But it's it's hands, it's eyes, it's it's, it's brain, isn't it? It's brain. algorithms. He, he had to come up with them. Mm. And just like Rocco had to come up with the depths of his colors. But if I were a mathematician, I could come up with algorithms. Which I'm not. I could come up with algorithms. But I couldn't. But I couldn't make any sense of applying brush to paper. I mean, I have no skill there. Yeah, but should we? Why don't I feel? Should I stand or should you sit? <laughs> makes this with the intention of producing prints, and is this that are the original works of art. Ready for it? Some computer-generated images may also qualify as original prints. Royal Society of Printmakers, we're in. <laughs> oh, I could rest my case. I would like you to take a look, Fred, at the pictures that are outside. Nobody else just You in particular. Do go out and have a look at the pictures and the videos uh, on the screen and the two output to print on the side. No photography are involved in either one of them. They were rendered, they were created with the same skills that are used to create CGI that you see in animations and so on. This is real art. This is real craft. There's a depth to it, there's color it takes years to make. There's nothing to do with monkeys here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a particular kind of computer generated program art that I was talking about. Well, I mean, there is all kinds of things out sure. there, but it's up. I think what Fred and I did here. and baskets. I think. Blood cats and baskets. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh, words against me. And so that's what we sometimes get at women. Yeah, no, yeah, no sorry. But we get cats and baskets in traditional art as well. Well, so. what this is really about <laughs> is what Fred is good at, which is <laughs> his eye. He's a fantastic, has a fantastic eye for what's good. He needs to, because there's a lot of junk out there. And, and what Lumen is about is curating this find out what is the best. It's not every kid in Africa <coughs> with a smartphone is going to be making great art. It needs to be curated. It needs to be found. And it needs to have fantastic people who are interested in the art to say what is the best and to make these judgments. Can, and I, can I come in there? Because I think this, is, this goes to the issue of democratization of art. And again, uh, who am I, um, you know, who tried very hard to democratize philanthropy, which is what Tiffin's all about, to say, the democratization of art isn't a universally good thing, but I think there is an issue around that we mustn't, um, we have to weigh the democratization of art against the loss of value judgments about what's good and what's bad. Is he the we last word? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and over to Q&A. We've got time for two questions from the crowd. Anything? You like stunned them into silence. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Do you have well, a look? Just a minute. Maybe someone has a question. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a while. I've got a sort of a question. Yes. I'm not sure that it's really relevant. I'm a bit shocked by Fred choosing as an example of real art Rothko. Uh -huh. Because <laughs> Rothko, above all, the style of art that Rothko is incredibly greedy of space. You have to have a whole room to have a small number of closely related pieces of art. You could put a hundred Mona Lisa's in that room, and you'd have something that was worth a million times the Rothko. I think you just picked, oh, I think I'm in favor of traditional art, but I think you may have picked the you wrong just like small way of promoting it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not against Rothko, I, mean, yeah. I think he's a minor figure. So would Picasso any comments have, would be useful too, yeah. Would yeah. Picasso have approved? He would yeah. have in fact caught me on record for saying Picasso would have loved this stuff. Yes, he, he he probably would have actually. I and uh, <laughs> perhaps to his death. <laughs> <laughs> no, he probably would have. And remember he did this um this this wonderful sequence of him drawing on a kind of transparent sheet with and being filmed from behind. So I think he would have loved anything techie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty. Okay, well, <laughs> well, well, you two are agreeing. I think we're going to call it a day. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs>